The recording. Okay, and what page is this? 574 or 575. Okay, so uh, it says using ordered pairs to solve problems, chapter 14, section 3. So it says both Ann and Bill earn the same amount <clears throat> each week. Ann starts with no money, but Bill starts with $5. How much will Bill have earned basically when Ann has $30? And it says, represent the situation using a table and graph. So again, I'm going to write a paragraph or two um, sometime today and pick a couple of you, and it'll be a situation kind of similar to this. But the difference is, in this example we're looking at, they both earn the same amount each week, which is what? Looks like it's $5 each week. In my example, the two students will earn different amounts and will start at different amounts. So it says, make a table showing how much money Ann and Bill have earned each week. And so here's the table, which is a good example of that. It says Ann's earnings. Remember, she started at zero. <clears throat> and then, um, is it, uh, let's see here. Is it $5 a week? Three, let Ann's earnings, let X be Ann's earnings and Y be Bill's earnings. And it says, plot the ordered pairs from the table. Draw a line to show the pattern. So I, I copied it and moved it, moved it over so it's a little bit bigger on our screen here. So Ann starts at zero, and um, so she would start. Let's see here. Let me do this. Ann's earnings, let X be Ann's earnings. So I'm going to do this right here. And I'm going to do this right here. And then it says, let Bill's earnings be Y. And so this would be Bill's earnings. Then it says, plot the ordered pairs from the table and draw a line to show the pattern. So the first coordinate pair would be 0, 5. And you can see it right there. X is 0, Y is 5. The second ordered pair uh, looks like it's week 1, the very first week. Um, X is, X looks like it's 3, and Y is 8. So it would be right about there, because these are in increments of five. Right about there and right about there. And then um, week two at six and 11. So this would be week two here, just past the five, six, and just past the 10 would be 11 right there. And so you can see it's linear. In other words, it doesn't curve at all. Comes, I don't think in sixth grade, but come seventh grade, you guys will be doing graphs where the lines change, where they're not straight. Right now, this is linear and, and, and pretty simple graphs. So it says, um, plot the ordered pairs from the table, draw a line to show the pattern, extend your line to the point where the x coordinate is 30 and the corresponding y coordinate is 35. So here's 30, and the corresponding y coordinate is 35. Okay, and so um, if you were to, to give the coordinate pair, it would be 30, comma, 35. So Bill has $35 when Ann has $30. Remember, the first coordinate is always x, and the second coordinate is always y. All right. Um, it says, what's the relationship between Bill's earnings and Ann's earnings? Well, if you don't see it, let me just tell you, Bill always has...
something more than Anne? And I'll let you guys answer that question. If you look at it for a minute, you should be able to see it pretty easily. Let's look at the guided practice. In the example on page 574, find another point of the line. What does that point represent? So let's just go back to the, the chart. We'll find another point on the line. I'm going to look at... Um, I'm going to look at this point right here because that's on the lines and this would be 15 and this would be 20. So the question is uh, what does um, what does the point or points represent? So um, 15 is X, so I'll just put 15 comma 20. 15 equals Ann's money, and 20 equals, what's the other one's name? Bill's earnings or money. Number two. In the example on page 574, write an equation to show the relationship between Ann and Bill's earnings. Um, so, um, X is Ann's earnings, and it's always less than $5. So, X plus 5 equals what? It says write an equation. So I've used the x. I'm going to end with the y. x plus 5 equals y. Remember, an equation always has an equal sign in it. So x plus 5 equals y. There's a simple equation. Number 3. It says write the missing coordinates and tell what the point represents. So again, I... I blew this one up so it's a little bit easier for everybody to see on the big screen here. What does the missing point represent? So they're talking about the red point right here. And you can see that the X values represent what? What's it say right there? Seconds. Time and seconds. Okay. So this would be 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and so forth. The Y value represents what? Uh, distance. distance. Okay. And so I'm looking, I'm looking at this first point right here. It's at 10 and 400, and the coordinate is 10, 400. So in 10 seconds, this um, jet car has gone how far? 400 meters, okay. In 20 seconds, how far has that jet car gone? 800. And in 15 seconds, it's gone how far? Yeah, 600, all right. So the question is, what does that represent? So you guys should be able to answer that. Questions, anybody? Yeah. I would just answer it right in here, in a little space write the coordinates and what each one represents. Independent practice, let's take a look. Again, we've got some charts there. Um, it says, in four and five, find the missing coordinates and tell what the point represents. So it's just like the one we just did. Here's the missing point right here, the X and the Y. So what does the X represent? Look at it. What's the X represent? that's pronounced titanium and it's the temperature and of course the title of the graph helps us out comparing temperatures temperature change in metals so the X represents the temperature and centigrade of titanium 
and the Y represents temperature in, in centigrade of what? Aluminum. And so, they want to know what the X and Y, what that value is, and what it represents. Number five, we're talking about wildlife sightings. So the X value, what's that represent? Deer. Deer. The number of deer that were spotted in a certain area. What's the Y represent? Elk. Elk. Okay. And then there's a missing value right here. They want to know what it is and what each one represents. Pretty easy. Um, for exercise five, it says find two other points on the line. I'm just going to say uh, find one. Everybody scratch out the two and put one. One other point on the line and then graph and label them and describe the relationship between deer sightings and elk sightings. So um, when they say find um, one other point on the line, so they're just talking about one of these any one of those that are already marked. You don't have to make up your own. At least that's how I'm reading it. So just put, pick one of the ones that are already there. So you can do number six. All right, let's look at the problem solving. Um, number seven, it says graph the points in the table on the grid at the right, and then draw a line through the points. So I'm not gonna bother graphing this. You guys should be able to do this. All right. What's the X value represent? Time. Time. Okay. What's the Y value represent? Page is red. Page is red. So just to help yourselves out, what I would do is go up here, and I'm just going to put an X right there. And then for page is red, I'm going to put a Y so I don't get confused. And in the future, when you guys see um, a table like that and you have to fill it in, make sure you mark the X and the Y so you don't get confused. And I'll just do one of these points. How about um, time and hours? At three hours, I'll do this one. It's three and 60. So I'm going to go three and go up to 60. So 60 is right about there. And then I'm going to label it. 3, 60. Okay? And then you would do that with the rest of them. And then it says, don't forget this, it says draw a line through the points. So once you label your points, let's say these are your points right here, here, and here, and here, then you got to draw a line through them. Okay, number nine. Number nine says, suppose you can, uh, you have a graph of speed that shows a lion can run four times as fast as a squirrel. Name the ordered pair that shows this relationship. What does this ordered pair represent? So a lion is running four times as fast as a squirrel. So um, Let's say a lion, and you guys can't use this. You'll have to come up with your own. But let's say a lion is running at um, 40 miles per hour. And the squirrel is running at what? 10, 10 miles per hour. Okay, that would be the ordered pair. Or you might have put 10 and 40. I mean, it doesn't, for this example, it doesn't really matter which comes first and which is second. So you can't use 10 and 40. You can't use that. You come up with your own. And then it says, what does the ordered pair represent? Well, whichever one is for the line, you say the line is running at, at X, you know, miles per hour, and the squirrel's running at, you know, Y miles per hour. So you pick any numbers, but make sure there's there's a difference of four. Not a difference, sorry, that's subtraction. One is four times larger than the other. Okay? Number 10, it says, Candace drives a total of 48 miles each day to get to work and back home. Okay, so that's to work and back. 
She works five days a week. Her car gets 21 miles per gallon of gas. About how many gallons of gas does she need to drive to work and back home each week? Wow, that's, that's a good one. I want you guys to do that. I'm not going to help you with this one, and it'll be worth a stick and a mustache jar. Okay. 11 and 12 looks like it's just multiple choice. Yeah, you guys can do that. Questions on any of these, you guys? No questions? No? Okay. Okay, have at it. <laughs> 